everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. <laughs> Hi! I'm here today with Bodil to tell you all about Multifunny! <laughs> Two hours later, let's try this again. Multi many phonics sounds, namely playing more than one note at once. <laughs> What are these? How do they work? How do you play them? And why would you want to? So multiphonics are really special and they are just a really interesting sound colour that you may want to add to your music. A lot of composers like to use this. I first got one by accident and I was like, how do they work? Well, you're basically hitting different overtones at the same time. A recorder is a single pipe, which theoretically means you should be able to play a single note at any one time. But a recorder has different registers. The first register is the second being the third, the fourth, and so on. What you're actually doing is choosing a fingering and a breath pressure that means the recorder is kind of moving between different registers at once and actually hitting them at the same time. It's destabilizing the note. For example, if you take an F on a tenor recorder and blow a bit harder, Now that is quite an aggressive sound, but the range of multiphonics you can achieve are endless. There are soft ones, uh, tonal ones, beautiful ones, angry ones. For example, very soft and how to find multiphonics. Well, on the recorder, you have what we call open fingerings like where you have holes closed next to each other, holes open next to each other. These are very, very stable and won't give you multiphonics. Then we have what are called forked fingerings. This is like combinations of open, closed, open, open, closed, closed. These are less stable and they're the ones that are gonna give you more rich multiphonics. with it. Make a weird and wonderful combination of fingers and try different breath pressures to see if you reach a multiphonic. <laughs> Opening holes halfway is going to make the note even less stable and even more prone to multiphonicking. <laughs> Say you want to produce a multiphonic on a certain note, for example, the G. Now this is a very stable note and on its own, it won't do it. What you can do is see if you can add a couple of half holes to destabilize it. And adding finger number seven, your little finger can also create a multiphonic. For example, on the E, if you're a bit advanced, you can also take the alternative fingering for that note and see if that produces a multiphonic if you change the breath pressure. So C, the alternative fingering is this, changing breath pressure. Ha. Ah. And the same effect can be produced by closing the end with your knee. So the note D, Add the knee. You can also, of course, use articulation to get some multiphonics. For example, if you do a bit of strong slap tonguing, you can hit those. So to summarize that, forked fingerings work best. You can try taking alternative fingerings because they tend to be less stable adding half fingers, adding your little finger, or even the knee. If you're like, oh, figuring all of that out is way too much work, don't worry, there is a book that has millions, literally millions, of fingerings already written down for you. That is Michael Vetter's book, Il Flauto Dolce ed Acerbo, and it is literally just 
pages and pages of fingerings. It even gives the notes written out. So say you want to make a specific chord, you can look it up. However, every recorder is slightly different. Even ones made by the same maker, they might produce different overtones. So this is just a guide, it's not gospel. And it will definitely produce different results on a soprano than, for example, a bass recorder. And in general, the larger or wider the recorder, the better and more rich the multiphonics will be. I'm going to show you now three of my favourite multiphonics to get you started. First one, take the note F, add a tiny little bit of your middle finger and then blow a bit harder. Take the note G sharp, add a tiny bit of this finger and blow a bit harder. And for a soft and beautiful one, they exist too, close all of the holes and close the end with your knee and experiment a bit with the breath pressure. The note just now that some of the multiphonics I reach by blowing harder, some of them I reach by blowing softer. The thing is you're aiming to get in between the registers. It's not about fortissimo playing, it's often about hitting something kind of in the middle. And as usual, if you're hearing strange noises in the video, it's Bodil who's here with me. You love multiphonics, don't you? But it's important to remember just the act of playing a multiphonic, that's not everything. Often we see this in the music and when we've hit a weird sound we think, okay that's done. But you can definitely really listen to and really get into the quality of the multiphonic. One really good way of practicing is to take your chosen fingering and to make waves with your breath from very soft to very loud, really listening to what's going on. Then take these different stages of sound colours and assign them numbers, one, two, three and four, so you can practise hitting your chosen sound colour at any one time. Yes, this video is incredibly nerdy, but what we're doing is getting into the nitty gritty of sound colour and this can be so rewarding because that's what makes it music and not just, oh, I have to play a weird sound here because the composer said to, because I'll tell you something, composers love multiphonics. Here are a few different ways it's notated in music, like this or like this. And if you're a composer watching this, something really important, because all recorders react slightly differently, please don't write a multiphonic in the music with specific notes, because it's very hit and miss if we're going to be able to get exactly those notes. It's much, much, much better to either notate the very bottom note or the harmonic note you want to hear and let us work it out from there. With the tools mentioned in this video, players, you're going to be fine. Someone just throw up on the ground. Last but not least, some resources if you want to get into this. I also mentioned this amazing book by Michael Fetter. Also in Walter von Hauer's The Modern Recorder Player Volume 3, there's a whole chapter on multiphonics. He gives a lot of exercises for practicing them, also including articulation. If you want to listen to an example where multiphonics can be really ethereal and beautiful, there is an amazing recorder piece called Austro, which happens to be on my debut album. So if you haven't ordered your copy already, head down to my web shop immediately, link in the description. So that was my introduction to multiphonics. I hope you found it useful. If you're playing a piece that features them, please leave it in the comments below because that could be helpful for others. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here in the corner. Down here is a link to the Team Recorder Patreon where you can choose to support the channel. And up here is a link to my introduction to extended contemporary techniques for the recorder. Thanks for watching and have a great day. 